Coming up in the news tonight, the issue of student registration fees being addressed. Cuban migrants charged before the court. And the countdown is on to the independence celebrations. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Italia Hall. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping the news tonight, the Superintendent of Education addressing an issue that has become a contention, contentious one for some parents. Registration fees for students entering the public school system. Some parents say it is a fee that they cannot afford to pay. The top education official on Grand Bahama is clearing the air on the issues tonight. Here is Megan Shepard. District Superintendent for Education for Grand Bahama, Bimini and the Keys, Ivan Butler, says he realizes that there has been some confusion among parents as it relates to registration fees for public schools. He confirms that there are no mandatory registration fees for public schools in the district. Every school on the island um, requires students to have an insurance um, and specifically a uniform kit. And that's the bulk of any fees that's, that, that's being charged by our schools. Some schools may charge uh, uh, a student booklet fee or small library fees, but fees are not excessive and they should not exceed anything over $100 or something like that. So we want parents to know that fees do not, I repeat, do not um, hinder any student from being enrolled in any government institution and if any parent or guardian have challenges with the fees they should let the school know but we are very confident and comfortable with the minimal fee that's uh, assessed to students and those fees are specifically for the child insurance and the physical education kit but he says if there was an increase at a school, he believes it was minimal and not the fault of the institution. There may be some fluctuation in fees and that's because of the vendors. Some um, insurance are vendors, they, they increase their, insur their fees and so that eventually is passed on to the student. The same thing with uniform, P uniform vendors um, will increase their fee and so that's the bulk and, and those fees range anywhere from 30 to 40 dollars per person and so that's the bulk of any school fee that we have in our public schools. Butler adds that they are working to create more consistency within the public school system. What we have been moving towards in the district is we've been moving towards um, book fees that are consistent with all of our schools. You know in the past we learned that some schools had uh, a sort of a high book fee, but we've been mandating so that all the primary schools have one fee for books for their primary schools and one for secondary as well as high schools. Megan Shepard, SEDNAS Network News. It is a program geared towards training individuals working in the trade industry. The Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, in agreement with Valencia College, introducing the National Center for Construction Education Research Program. Program coordinator says this is the first cohort, which is a group of students out of Abaco. Jamila Mizek reports. The Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute introducing its first cohort of NCCER participants. Coordinator for NCCER Northern Bahamas, Kenton Roker, says it is a program that is recognized worldwide in all areas of construction. What we have here, this is the first cohort that started um, the NCCER certification here in the Bahamas. They're from Moss Island. Um, they're right now going into their level one plumbing. There are five levels before they go into the journeyman. Um, they really set the standard when it comes to, to a community per se, they work as a team and they're getting a whole lot accomplished together. Um, they completed their core and like I said, they're into that level one um, for plumbing. When they finish that, um, they'll go into the level one for electrical once they complete the, the plumbing side of it. There are 12 participants in this cohort and the program is for a total of five weeks. Roker says participants will be certified in the construction industry. What they're getting is some of them are school children. 
So you find when they graduate from high school, in another two to three years, they'll be graduating with all the different certifications in plumbing, electrical, HVAC, which is, which is air conditioning, heating and ventilation. Um, also in drywall, installing drywall, finishing drywall and carpentry. They'll be complete, they can be, they'll be able to do the entire phase of construction. Broker notes that there is a growing interest in the program. Meanwhile, program participant Latanya Hill says so far things have been going well. When I got in, I find that I'm um, really interested in to see the persons around me who actually join. These were some of the persons who um, would, who people would normally talk down in the community. And, and I look at them and I'm like, okay, I'm a graduate. These persons, some of them dropped out on, you know, some of them didn't have that life and they, they want it so it kind of boosts me in a sense I would tell the young people to take advantage of it you know you can learn so much um, there's something you can actually see yourself because this is not only the plumbing um, what we're doing now is plumbing but they different they have different aspects different levels different um, trades so I would tell the young folks out there like take advantage of it Jamila Misek ZNS Network News Thanks, Jamila. In other news, the Office of the Prime Minister in Grand Bahama partnering with Fulbright Scholars, the U.S. Embassy, and other stakeholders to provide an app development course. The six-week course, which officially began on July 5th, is in line with the government's commitment to increase the technology field and create young entrepreneurs on this northern island. The Minister of State for Grand Bahama Senator, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, says the knowledge to create apps is a skill that he believes young people should possess. We also understand that developing the apps that are on our uh, telephones are really now become not just the way of communicating, but it is the way of commerce, uh, it is the way uh, of banking, um, it is really the way of doing business, it is the way of transferring money. Um, and so one of the skills that we wanted to um, make sure that our young people uh, could get into is developing their own apps. And again, you could imagine this can be used throughout the island of Grand Bahama. Every business in Grand Bahama could probably use some form of an app. Course instructor and CEO of Clearly Innovated Incorporated, Aaron Saunders, outlining the course objectives. Lead coordinator Raquel Hart says a course of this magnitude would usually cost thousands of dollars, but they are pleased to offer the Fulbright app development program free of charge. At the end of the day, it's really to me about building technical capital in our community. The idea is that when we have an idea, we want to be able to look to someone that we know, someone that we're acquainted to, and say, hey, I need help doing this. Uh, it's, it's similar to a problem that we have in the United States. A lot of black communities, tons of great ideas, tons of gre uh, great creativity. But when you say, hey, I need someone to help me build my app, we need to look outside of our community. and It just becomes more of a, more of a struggle. So I hope to do my part here. Um, and... You know, hopefully everyone will, will find the course beneficial. At the end of the sixth week, we are pleased to further announce that these participants will walk away with a certificate and be able to begin building apps. The Office of the Prime Minister has also agreed to be able to provide seed funding to persons um, who would have successfully complete, I should say, be eligible to apply for seed funding. And so this would lead to more entrepreneurship in our community. And as Minister would have stated, it also helps us to continue to build capacity as it relates to the technology hub here on Grand Bahama Island. The U.S. Coast Guard Robert Yarrett handed over nine Cuban nationals to local immigration officers on Tuesday. The migrants, six men and three women, were found on a key in the Key Sal Bank in the southern Bahamas. They claim that they departed Cuba on Monday, June 28th on a 16-foot rustic vessel destined for the United States. However, after two days at sea, they ended up beaching the vessel in the Key Sal Banks. After receiving the Cubans from the U.S. Coast Guard officials, 
officials, immigration officers transported them to headquarters for further processing and to be examined by staff from the disease and surveillance unit of the public hospital's authority. Now yesterday, the nine Cuban nationals were charged with illegal landing. The group appeared in the Freeport Magistrate Court No. 2 before Deputy Chief Magistrate Debbie Ferguson and all pled guilty as charged. They were convicted and ordered deported to their country of origin. Additionally, a Cuban and Haitian national also appearing in court to answer to the charge of overstaying. They both pled guilty, were convicted, and ordered to be deported to their country. All 11 persons were turned over to the Immigration Department, who will expedite their transport to the detention center in New Providence and to await deportation. Bahamians will pause to celebrate the country's 48th year of independence. Several events are planned for this weekend, including a flag-raising ceremony set for tomorrow in East Grand Bahama, West Grand Bahama, and Freeport. And tonight, we will continue to highlight those in the entertainment industry who are promoting the Bahamian culture. In this report, we profile a man considered a forerunner and a pioneer who has taken the Bahamas to the world. And he's done all of this while spreading the message of gospels through his music. Romico Knowles has the story. One of the biggest Bahamian gospel reggae artists in the Caribbean, Ramont Green, goes by the name Monty G. He has made an indelible mark in the gospel music industry and has toured, written songs, and produced for and with some of the biggest reggae stars, including Beanie Man, Kimani Marley, and Junior Reed. He has accomplished much and is a proud Bahamian. When I first gave my life to the Lord, I mean, I started writing lyrics. Like, you know, you beat on the desk in class and you're clashing and things like that against, you know, a lot of things. I, I, I'm a competitor at heart. Anybody know me know that. So I always wanted to win. So when it used to be freestyle, I used to go home, construct my freestyle, and I used to write it, but construct it like a freestyle so it sounded like I was making it up as I was going. <laughs> and that was winning for me, you know what I mean? So I kind of got a little taste of being in front of a little audience and kind of, you know, uh, perform it to a certain degree at that stage. And back then, you don't look at it as a talent. You just think it's something anybody and everybody could do. What good is there in becoming successful if others are not benefiting from your success? Monty G has paved the way and has provided opportunities for many Bahamian artists over the years. It is his way of contributing to the country he loves. To me, that's like, that's the, the most joyful part of the journey. Uh, when you it's not about what you do for you, it's what you're able to do for others that, that actually is a trophy or a reward in itself. You know what I mean? Uh, don't show me what you do for you, show me what you do for somebody else and that kind of will let me know the character of person that you really are. He believes that the Bahamas has some of the most talented people in the world. We do have some of the best talent and I would be a fool not to say that because I come from there, you understand what he said? Um, we have some of the least exposed talent. I want to say in the entire Caribbean, but um, as a credit to that, in a certain sense, we also do have some of the most hard headed people, you know, that we do don't listen. And I think that that's one of the things I've, I've even uh, incurred, like um, dealing with our own home talent and stuff like that. You know, we don't have a lot of people who listen. You know, we have a, a lot of people who know everything, but he ain't got much to show for it. And with years of knowledge and experience, he says the Bahamas is also a place filled with many Bahamian artists whose dreams have not died and adds that they have never gotten a chance to wake up and live it. That's 
Right, you know, a lot of artists end up coming to when you're young, you feel you could take down the world with your talent. But as the reality starts to settle in that that's not just going to move it for you, then you now you have to take different roads to it and then you sacrifice the time that you would want to give to your dreams and your aspirations to other things. You balance it now between the passion and the cupboard. You got to fill the cupboard or you got to please pass it. Which one? The cupboard's going to always win, you know what I mean? He is now a co-founder of Royalty and Respect Management, a corporation which prides itself on managing artists and generating quality music. He shares his hopes for fellow Bahamian artists. We want them to be more successful because it would just mean a lot more to the Bahamas, our economy and stuff like that. But I would love for artists to get more educated um, on the things that are important outside of just the creative aspect of putting out music. Talent itself is not a business, you know what I'm saying? Um, people make money off of business. People make money off of product. A product itself cannot make money. Um, but we focus more on just being a product. If you don't have the people who are adequate enough in understanding the business aspect of uh, as it relates to the product that you have, you'll never get anywhere. And although he won't be celebrating the country's 48th Independence Day in the Bahamas, he says for him, it is a proud moment. 48 years and we're going clear to 49. You know, everybody enjoy yourself as a proud moment for Bahamians everywhere, no matter where you live in the world. At the end of the day, wrap your flag. I see you got one there on the back. I know I have, I normally have my Bahamian tennis shoes and everything like that. I normally put them on and wear but they are my colors. You know, no matter where I is in the world, so I can definitely rep that. You know, rep it too is a very proud moment. Be proud to be Bahamian at the end of the day. And you know, with it is my lift up your head. You know what I mean? The rising sun. Yeah. Romico Knowles, CNS Network News. Thank you so much for that report. Romico Knowles, stay with us. There's more news right after this break.